we're back today we're doing ninth house mercury so first we have the ninth house which is about higher education aka this is post high school our higher mind our higher ideas so like our philosophy these are your opinions um your travel experiences your attitude towards foreign culture people places and things spirituality and your connection to organized religion your sense of adventure the people you meet at school slash college and our grandchildren overall the ninth house is about looking at the bigger picture and then we have mercury which is about communication what and when are we talking about where and why are we talking about it messages of any kind so text email regular mail calls anything that you know is any form of communication our actual tangible voice and the things that we think about consciously the manner in which we go about conversing with others is the basics two celebrities that i thought stood out the most to me were jada pinkett smith we are going to get into her and sylvia plath so first of all what are you learning mercury does well here um because gemini and sag have a more similar bond than any other sister sign in my opinion so i would say that you love to learn about anything and everything learning makes you feel good it's like your mercury just drank a cup of coffee but you don't just want to learn for the sake of learning you want to learn big stuff that connects to the big ideas of life ninth house can be hard to pin down or explain much like sagittarius which is the sign you know that corresponds to it how to make marry me chicken is something to learn but it doesn't necessarily have a big impact on you know the overall outcome of one's life so you like to learn and you like to ponder and pontificate about life's big questions not just learning any old thing this will lead you to realms of thought such as philosophy spirituality and religion the big questions about life that we chew on for a while questions in which there may not be one correct answer so you just kind of chew on it endlessly is really a place where your mind loves to bask in it. it loves to bask in this energy and it loves to keep chewing things over seeing you know how can i flesh out my answers how what answers do i come to and why maybe i come to different answers at different points in my life this is really where your mercury feels like it's getting its exercise it's doing its push-ups in a good way it's going your mercury is going for its morning run when it's pondering themes like this if a tree falls and nobody hears it does it make a sound what is the most important relationship in our lives is it our kids our spouse is it ourself what is love do you believe in god why or why not do you need organized religion to be close to god if god is in control why do bad things happen all these questions again they have no direct right or wrong answer but there are answers nonetheless i believe in god but i don't think organized religion is necessary some people believe it necessary and some don't believe in god at all throughout the course of your life you will chew on these questions over and over again you'll probably change your mind a couple times until you come to an answer you feel like answers the questions in the way that you think is best when you do finally feel like you've looked at all the possibilities from all angles you love to go out into the world and talk about all the things that you've just pontificated on debate teams are really great for you guys teaching podcasts or just groups where you come to talk about these things religious based or spirituality groups are great areas for you to communicate your ideas and listen to the ideas of others these groups that you join can continuously give you new ideas and new philosophical questions to think about you may want to talk so much that you end up in the teaching realm of things i think in today's day and age where everybody has a podcast i think any sort of teaching course virtual or in person obviously virtual maybe you can reach a little bit more people teach a philosophy at your local community college writing a book or even leading some kind of workshop that spreads your message this placement and this tendency to want to spread what you've learned about these bigger life questions it leans heavily toward being a preacher or some sort of religious leader this is very much a thinking house and with your mercury here vocalizing that far and wide is definitely one of the missions of your current incarnation when we look at jada pinkett smith she is you know i would I would describe her as an actress, but
but she's most recently known for her Red Table Talks. This is a Facebook show, former Facebook show. I do believe it's been canceled where three different generations share their opinions. That is what she has marketed, you know, her show as. The bouncing around of ideas that are seen here are runs with the theme of the Mercury in the ninth house and that these are conversation topics with no direct answer. Some of the conversation topics when you do go look at the former Red Table Talk episodes, which are still up if you guys want to check them out. Um, inside of the mind of people who hate, what is gaslighting? I truly think that she is, although I don't agree with her as a person, a really great example of what it means to float certain questions out into the air, into the universe, and bring in people for conversation about certain things. Well, knowing that you're not looking for any one answer, you're not trying to convince everybody of one thing, you're just floating it out there like, hey, let's talk about this. Anybody who has a ninth house mercury, I think if you went back and watched some of the Red Table Talks, you would just be thinking and talking for hours. So I, I suggest you guys check that out. Or if you have checked it out or checked out something similar, let me know down below. Um, when it comes to college, because the ninth house is so much about college and Mercury is about learning, you may be more active than the average person in college. From what I've noticed, almost all ninth house people or Sag natives are very active on campus. So maybe you're taking extra classes that you don't need, like they have nothing to do with your major, but you just want to learn. Maybe you're in lots of different groups that, again, are not really correlated to your plan, but they're just there. This is a person who may also sit in classes where you're not getting a grade, but you're still showing up just because you want the information. These are people who can be very, very talkative in class. We all have those people, whether you went to college or not, we've been in a classroom setting where every time the teacher asks a question, they got to raise their hand. This very much could be these people. Um, networking a lot during college with everyone, not just other students, are manifestations of this placement. So when you go to college, I feel like there's such abundant resources of things, and I feel like people are one of those things. You guys are the people who not only will talk to the other students and not only are in a bunch of classes and a variety of classes at that and clubs, you'll also be talking to the teachers and the counselors, um, the advisors, the financial aid people, because you're you talking and networking in this arena is like what you're meant to do. You learn so much and you could learn about anything, really. You could learn about hey, I want to be an English major and my English teacher directed I take a couple more classes so I can teach abroad. Who you talk to and what you learn in a higher education setting, if you do choose to go, I think is so invaluable and you guys really are the definition of taking advantage of an experience. We all can have an experience. Anybody can go to college and write some things on the paper and turn it in and kind of just like I'm not going to say slide through, but not give it 100%. And then there are those of us who actively are staying after class, talking to the teacher, talking to the students, joining clubs, maybe even making a club. You may be involved in protests on campus. There's a lot of that I see going on recently in the news as far as the Israel-Hamas war and the pro-Palestine and the, you know, stuff going on at USC. You being vocal, talking, talking about your opinions on campus with other people who are trying to gain higher education is just where you will excel and it'll just be so natural for you guys if you are in college and you are very quiet i definitely encourage you to get out there only good things will happen to you from it you may also in a different manifestation be very proud and speak a lot about your college experience as you feel like it has helped shape a part of who you are you may also this is also people who we meet at college in the ninth house. You may also meet very talkative Gemini-like people in college who are always thinking and talking about everything all the time. People who are very quick with it and multifaceted. Now, when it comes to things that are foreign, you really like to zoom out and look at big picture things. Or you can view it looking up at big picture things. Your mind has a tendency to want to go far away, which leads us to the foreign element. You love to learn about foreign people, places, and things, aka their culture. It may be one culture in particular you're obsessed with, but overall you love learning about the bigger picture differences. What do they eat? 
How do we compare their work-life balance to ours in the U.S.? Or what are similarities and differences in religious takes? You are doing this because not only is it interesting, but you're still trying to answer the big ticket questions you had in the beginning. And since there's no right or wrong answer, you see the necessity and the validity of considering all viewpoints to come to the most authentic answer for you. Basically, you need to mentally peruse all paths of thought so you can make the best decision. Let's say you're in a supermarket and there's a shopping cart and that is your mind. You want to slowly walk up and down each aisle looking at each thing so you can make sure that you pick the best thing for you. I didn't just rush and throw something in the cart. I actually talked to people and I thought about what was the best answer for me. Your speech and your communication can literally have a foreign influence. This can manifest as being bilingual. Or you're just one of those people who may have an intense interest in learning languages and you can be an avid user of things like Rosetta Stone or, you know, I know that may be a bit archaic for you young kids. We used to have to do Rosetta Stone. Now I think there's apps like Duolingo, stuff like that where you're, you feel that learning the language is just Mercury speaking learning how to speak the foreign language may connect you a little bit more to the culture and therefore you feel like you may learn a little bit more authentically by being able to speak in their own terms maybe you move in life or you may travel for an extended period of time or i've even seen people say that they have foreign family members who may have like parents immigrated to america but their parents don't speak english they just speak the language from the country that they're from but the kid speaks english so then they like have this dual thing going on this like double world um so that may have an effect on you that may be speaking in and of itself foreign or maybe you just pick up an accent from your family members or your time abroad something like that if your mercury is afflicted there can be an aversion let's say if there's a square from mars or pluto i think this can cause some pain or frustration around this or just at least some intensity. I know people who refuse to speak the language of their parents, even though their parents, like, that's what's easiest for them to communicate. They may only speak English, or they may feel like they are not accepted into their parents' culture because they may be born speaking English, but their parents are born speaking somewhere, something else. So again, it's not all sunshine and roses as with anything. If there are some squares, some affliction, some bad transits you may just feel like learning a different language or learning about a foreign culture can be a bit aggravating to you at times each chart is different you're gonna have to intuit that a little bit for yourself spending time in foreign lands or communicating with foreign people if unafflicted you know and if all goes well it's so stimulating to you you really love taking in their culture and you do this well you are great at assimilating or at least respecting other cultures so let's say if you have a foreign friend or a foreign spouse you'll really mesh well with their family because people want to see that you're trying even if you don't always get it right your effort is going to garner their respect if you're in someone's culture and you're trying to say a word and you mispronounce part of it at least people know that you're like trying and you're on the you're trying to get there and so i think that always makes people more willing to help than if you were to just say well i don't know or i don't understand or i don't do this in my house when in rome do as the romans do and you're amazing at that that's a phrase i think you take you were just born with and you take that with you through life but back to things that are foreign so far away is fascinating to you because it's far away and that's really it it doesn't really matter where it is to you far away could also be going somewhere far away in the mind um with mercury here it's gonna take a ride on the pineapple kush express we're going to mushroom town to candy land drugs can be such a huge part of your spiritual and philosophical journey there was this cool article i read i'm gonna attach it if i can find it there was a white supremacist who and strong asterisk along with therapy took lsd and saw the error of his thinking and came out saying look i'm not racist anymore drugs and vacations are kind of one in the same when it comes to the ninth house they take us elsewhere and they give us the ability to step back to zoom out and to look at things from a broader perspective So I'm not telling you guys to experiment with drugs, but if you have, I would say to 
Think about some of the things you've been pondering about while you're sober and in life and see how your opinion differs when you're high. See what new revelations or epiphanies that you may have come up with on, you know, your little trippy experience. This goes for a drug or a vacation. And see if you don't come back to the problem with a different mindset. But once again, strongly discouraging anybody from using drugs. I'm only saying if you've done them already. Let's just say you have like a coworker and his name is Bob. And he's annoying because he's all he always chews too loud. And he never refills the printer paper and he leaves early or whatever. You may be irritated or thinking to say something to him. But when you go on vacation, you might not think about it that much. You might say, yeah... Bob is kind of annoying, but he's not meaning any harm. It's not that big of a deal. Drugs do the same. They offer you another outlet from which to float above life and live. You may have intense experiences that are intellectual or have revelations while high that you carry with you for the rest of your life. These are the people who go to Peru and do ayahuasca with a shaman and come back changed. Their friend died and they're really like suicidal and then they take acid and then they look at life totally differently. These are the types of of experiences that you can have. But as a, you know, a big, big asterisk, I would say, please be careful not to resort to drugs as a way to think through problems. But it just may be a part of your life experience. Feeling closer to God or the source may happen on drugs, which is a similar theme to the 12th house here, even though these houses square each other. When it comes to religion, um, I would say that Religion and moral values may frequent themselves in your speech. Your opinion, emphasis on your opinion of religion and moral values may frequent themselves in your speech. You do this because these topics interest you so you can listen to others as well. But the sign makes a difference. And Libra in the ninth may be a lot more welcoming to the opinions of others when it comes to, you know, religious and moral matters someone with a mercury in aries or a mercury in leo may just be more interested in focusing on their train of thought this is also a bit of the media intake in religious media is also something that might interest you going to church or some sort of religious based group this could be watching documentaries about different religions reading religious texts and philosophizing them that is so up your alley what is the fable of Cain and Abel? The boy who killed his brother over jealousy. What is the story of the Ramayana? You take a lot of pride in knowing about these things and you want to share what you've learned. Creating religious media is a big thing for your Mercury in the ninth as well. Writing books, again, podcasts, leading workshops or seminars, or just traditional preaching are ways for you to get your thoughts out about religion and morality in general no matter what religion that you are or even if you find that you would label yourself as not very religious i would say to read the religious text of your or read you know at least some of the religious text of the religion that you feel most closely associated with and see how you feel and see what you learn it may spark or open up a door for you about religion if you haven't started considering it already and this happens a lot when you're younger now we move on to siblings um mercury is about our siblings your sibling could be foreign or could lead you into contact with foreign cultures in some way maybe they move abroad or they travel for work so you go abroad often to visit them or just pick up on the culture through your siblings Maybe some of your family immigrated, but not all of them. So your siblings may seem foreign. I'm in America. I don't know how many of you watching. I would assume most are, but I've seen a lot of people immigrate to this country and they are calling their family back home. Something like that where your sibling has an element of being foreign or far away. Your sibling may marry into a foreign family. And so it brings an entirely new culture and way of being into your life or into your view that you may not have had before or you know in a more simple mundane sense maybe your sibling is just more Sagittarian like uh, or very philosophical and you guys enjoy conversing on this subject again unless it's afflicted where there may be some squares from Mars in which case the conversation or mental ideas may conflict but yes that was Mercury in the ninth you guys this is one that I can ramble on a lot about forever because it is so broad and it touches on 
quite a few different things that are also broad but i try to do my best to give you an overarching theme or idea to zoom out as you guys would like and communicate these ideas in broad terms so that you can think on it and chew on it in your time as you guys like to do summing it up some advice that i would give to you guys I give advice at the end of every video how to make your Mercury in the ninth super happy. Recognize that beautiful things can happen on drugs, but that you never need drugs to go somewhere in your mind, and they can be a useful tool for understanding certain parts of life. Number two, take time to chew on deep philosophical questions. Think about them, bring it up with friends and in conversation, and then think about it some more. It will help you to figure out who you are morally. Number three, learn as much as you can about different aspects of different cultures. Travel far and wide and get active in your higher education learning. Your Mercury will thank you for it. So guys, that is it for Mercury the 9th. Please drop down in the comments and let me know what are some of the deep philosophical questions that you guys have pondered on or are still looking for the answers to what conversation topics do you love to have and what kind of media do you like to intake and why i'm very interested i think this is going to be a very interesting comment section i've also got mars in the ninth and i'm a double sag so this stuff is right up my alley um i had a lot of fun making this video and i think overall this is a very great place for mercury to be anyways i'll see you guys in the next video for mercury in the eighth bye